Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about all of the mess that has been going on in our second favorite state, honey, Trifling, Texas. OK, shout out to everybody who's an OG of Lovely News Network, where we name each and every state. So what's been going down is this. If it has not been one thing, it's been another right now in Texas, specifically in Dallas. Not only have we had a number of rappers getting shot you know, just randomly out the blue. Also, several people have lost their lives this weekend. And they're saying this is one of the deadliest weekends they've had in a while in Dallas. Um, over seven people have died. 21 people were shot over the weekend. So this violence is escalating all through Texas. And so the mayor's coming out. A lot of people are very worried. The news organizations are talking about it. So let me go ahead and play you guys these news clips and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. In the city since that time. Our Ben Russell is following that story for us right now. He joins us live from home with the latest. Ben? Laura, these crimes have clearly kept detectives busy all weekend long. And in fact, within the last hour, they put out two new pieces of information about two of those shootings, two of the many that we're reporting on. Uh, one of them includes specific evidence that they want you to see. It's video that they have to share of surveillance camera that happened to be pointing in the direction of a vehicle they want you to pay close attention to. It's a four door car, possibly a Honda Civic. It has dark rims. This vehicle was last seen speeding away from the scene of a homicide last night. Uh, this was a homicide of a man named Raul Resendez on Curvin Drive. That's in Pleasant Grove. The victim's daughter, Diana Resendez, she saw that vehicle. She sped after it and she was later found shot to death in her own car. Now, police also just put out new details about a separate shooting from around the same time last night, about nine o'clock on Forest Lane. Two parents in this incident were told were on their way to pick up their two year old from daycare. They got into a crash right outside of the daycare. The driver of the other car pulled a gun, shot both of them and drove away. Though we should say those two people both did survive that incident. Police are looking for that driver. These were again two of nine separate shootings on just Sunday alone. And again, one of at least 21 since last Thursday night. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson put out a statement speaking to much the same thing those two people did as well. It reads in part, Dallas cannot reduce violent crime by shrugging off, shrugging off the numbers or pointing toward increases in other cities. The next police chief must be committed to doing his or her part to help make Dallas the safest large city in the country. Again, he's mentioning that because the city of Dallas is looking for its next police chief. All right, so you guys just watch the news clip. So like I said, it's a lot of stuff that's going on right now, specifically in hip hop, you know, all spring and summer. Like I was telling y'all before, I felt there was a, you know, people were invoking that demon time energy and, you know, these damn demons are coming home to roost, you know, so the whole situation, I mean, 2020 has just been just one big crazy reality. I feel like we're living like in some type of weird TV show. You know, if it's not one thing, it's another. And a lot of that energy was sparked off in the Twin Cities with the whole George Floyd situation. And I feel like that energy has just basically dissipated throughout the nation because crime, killing, violence have been on the rise all over, even here in the Twin Cities. I mean, the shootings out here, people losing their lives, it's gotten really bad. Um, and in other cities to Detroit, Chicago, and now Dallas, you know, so this whole situation is insane. So initially earlier in the week, um, rapper Mo3 was killed on the freeway in broad daylight. He was chased down by his assailants and gunned down and his body was on the freeway for, you know, a few hours while they gathered the scene. It was crazy. So we had that. And if you guys do not know, Mo3 and Lil Boosie were really close, okay? They just recently did a song together not even four months ago. They've done other music together. And Mo3 had skills. He really could rap. And Boosie was, like, really standing behind him. So when he found out about Mo3's death, he was obviously upset. Um, he took to Twitter, and he was going off. So this is what he had written on Twitter. He says, I'm at a loss for words. Hashtag tip my boy. Then he says, Mo3, see you when I get there. Once again, the power of the tongue. Then he goes on to say, they stop calling and texting me. Fuck you hoes, niggas, fake ass family. Y'all can suck my dick. All y'all got a motive fucking with me anyway. Suck a dick. 
Then he goes on to say, fuck Capital One. Y'all bitches go pay one way or another. Then he says, Trill ENT, fuck all niggas. So it seems like he's having some issues with his um, record label or Capital One. They owe him some money, so he's been ranting about that. Then he also was saying, you know, he's trill and fuck the dudes who are against him or whatever else. So anyways, long story short, no one had heard from Boosie since then. Then we find out that he went to Big Mo's like remembrance ceremony, like outside. And so they were doing like a, a huge hood remembrance for him at Big T Plaza. So him and his Sprinter van, they pulled up to Big T Plaza to show love and somebody was there. They got the shoot in the bus. And so as they tried to leave, um, the shooting occurred. Little Boosie was hit. So by the time the police got there, they were saying they didn't see anything. And then Bootsy ended up showing up at the hospital to get treatment. We have confirmed that rapper Boozy was shot in Dallas. That word coming from Mo 3's manager, Brandon Rainwater. But he didn't give us any more details. Police say someone called 911 and reported the shooting at Big T Bazaar earlier this afternoon. But when officers arrived, they didn't find anything. They did say someone later turned up in a nearby hospital with a gunshot wound. However, they don't know if it's related. TMZ is reporting that the Louisiana rapper was in fact shot in the leg and is being treated at a hospital. Boozy was among the hundreds of family and friends who attended last night's candlelight vigil for Dallas rapper Mo3. Mo3 was driving on I-35 around noon Wednesday when police say a man jumped out of a separate car with a gun. 28-year-old got out and ran but was shot on the freeway and later died. So far, there has been no arrest in Mo3's murder and police do not have any suspects. So... You know, thank goodness he's okay. But this entire situation is just very, very disturbing because you have the whole situation with Mo3, then little Boosie was hit. Thankfully, he was not killed in that shootout. Then on top of that, yesterday, Benny the Butcher, who's not from Texas, he's from New York, he's a New York rapper. He's been around for a while. And so he was going into a local Walmart. So as he was going into the local Walmart to go shopping, he pulls up in his Rolls Royce. He has all this jewelry on. And obviously some stick up kids might have been following him, you know, knew his location, you know, just who knows where these dudes came from. But they came to rob him. And so he tried to run and get away from the robbers and he ended up getting shot. New tonight, a New York rapper recovering after someone shot him during an attempted armed robbery in Texas. Police say Benny the Butcher was shot in the leg this weekend at a Walmart in Houston. The rapper, whose real name is Jeremy Pennick, was getting out of his Rolls Royce when a group of men approached him and demanded his jewelry. Police say as Pennick ran off, the suspects opened fire and hit him in the leg. So far, no arrests. So this entire situation is insane and it's letting you know that the goons are out here. They're lurking and they're watching. And this is really scary. Um, Benny will be OK. He was shot in the leg. So now I want to talk about the dentist. His name is Dr. Rose. And I didn't know about him before this. Um, at first, I thought it was like a joke because who was saying, you know, a rapping dentist got shot. And I'm like, that doesn't even go together. Like, that sounds like an oxymoron. So I had just assumed it was like some type of like joke meme or something you know so I didn't pay too much attention and then people had brought it to my attention like no he was a real rapper but he was a dentist so I started kind of you know doing my background research into him and um I want to go ahead and play you guys this news clip really quick of the rapping dentist y'all go ahead and check this out a Dallas rap artist is the victim of gunfire this time the shooting happened at an office building along Central Expressway where the part-time rapper is a full-time dentist. Ken Kaltoff is live in Dallas with the latest on this. Ken? Meredith, three people were wounded at this office building last night. The part-time rapping by one of them is the same occupation as another man who was killed on a Dallas freeway earlier this week. Well, right now, police tell me that rapping and gunfire seem to be the only connections between those two. The window is boarded today at the Central Expressway office building where police were called just after 9 p.m. last night. And Labardi Lane. All three victims took themselves to hospitals. One left a bullet-riddled vehicle behind at the scene just north of downtown Dallas. 
It is the office of dentist Jared Rosenborough. He wears scrubs in his dentistry website. His Instagram page has photos of his part-time endeavor as a rap artist. The Instagram page has 154,000 followers. Gunfire ended the life of full-time rapper Mo3 south of downtown at noon Wednesday in the middle of a highway. Police said the victim tried to get away from his attacker. He got out and was running away, and the uh, suspect began chasing him, shooting at in his direction at some, the whole time. The 28-year-old was known to family and friends as Melvin Noble. He grew up poor in Dallas and made a name for himself. His manager told us yesterday that social media about the murder provides clues about who might be to blame. Once you start passing the people up that support you, then they'd be willing to do anything to bring you back down. And so. It's a lot of jealousy. It's a lot of envy. But manager Brandon Rainwater tells me today he does not believe Mo 3's shooting was related to what happened at the office of Dr. Rose. It's a tough city to make it in the hip-hop world. Police tell us tonight they are still investigating both of these cases, but as separate incidents. All right, so you guys just saw that. And um, I thought his backstory was just amazing. The fact that you know, he decided to go to school and get into dentistry as opposed to the drug game and, you know, having to watch his back and, you know, getting involved in the gangs and all that stuff. He said a lot of his family was involved in that type of stuff, but he wanted to go a different route. But he's always liked rapping. And what you doing, Gina? What you want, Roscoe? I want some veneers. Everybody want veneers. Well, can I, can I get them? How, how much money you got? A little bit nothing. Uh, a little bit of nothing. A, a little bit nothing. A little bit nothing. And one of the reasons why he wanted to get into dentistry is because, as we know, like down south, grills are really popular. They're probably not as popular as they once were, but a lot of dudes back, I would say, 10 years ago, and I lived in the Carolinas, like everybody had gold in their mouth. You know, that was just the thing. And so it went from people having gold caps to getting gold grills. And what a lot of people don't realize is that gold can rot away your real teeth, you know, because as you're drinking and eating, all that stuff, you know, gets in your teeth and it can rot it away and you can have all types of teeth problems with that gold. Um, so he decided to start getting into that to repair a lot of these dudes' mouth because they came in and they would just have horrible teeth. They'd want the golds off. They want veneers. So that was his specialty was fixing people's teeth, regardless if they're crooked or you're having issues from, you know, gold grill damage. And he's done a good job. He's changed a lot of people's lives. And I am big on teeth. So teeth that look horrible scare me. <laughs> I'm sorry. So some of these pictures, I was like, ah, you know what I mean? <laughs> some of these pictures just look creepy. So props to him, honey, for getting them damn gold grills off and refixing these people's teeth and giving them a new smile and making them feel more confident about their life. I really respected that. But one thing I noticed about the dentist is that he also did a lot of flossing. And, you know, and I'm not just talking about teeth, but I'm talking about on social media, you know, the jewelry, the high end clothing, um, the money. So let me just go ahead and show you guys some videos here. Hey, them really diamonds, them really boogles on uh, them really boogles. Everybody want to know the elk from my middle name, Lee. You know what I'm saying? Really boogles. Man. Doc Rose, I appreciate all my loyal fans, all my loyal patience. We just hit 100k followers, so guess what? We got some dope ass giveaways coming. We got some dope ass transformations coming, and we got some dope ass views coming. Rose. Okay, so you guys just saw that music video. Um, so that was one of the videos that he posted onto his social media page. But like I said, even when you see him outside of the dentistry, I mean, he's geared up, you know, Balenciagas and Fendi, Louis, you know, dressed very nice, um, very handsome man. But, 
you know, and this is the sad part that there even has to be a but, you know, what I notice is that unfortunately, sometimes in our community, we're not allowed to show our blessings. We're not allowed to, you know, to just be great without people hating, feeling some type of way. We should be giving this man props that all the money that he's making to be able to buy his clothing, the jewelry, the the Rolls Royces, the Bentley cars, because he showed a lot of stuff off on his social media. The difference is he's worked hard for that. That money he's showing off, those clothes, the cars, they all came from a legitimate source. This wasn't drug money. I don't even think it was wrapping money from shows because he's not that big. This was mainly from his dental business. You know, and it's sad that we tell young boys all the time, get an education, get a legit job, get a legit career. So that way, you know, you can make some money and, you know, what I'm saying take care of yourself, take care of your family. And this is what this young man did. And somehow that brought a lot of jealousy. These dudes literally went to his office because everybody knows where his dental office is. And they went to rob him and he tried to run away and they shot him, you know, just like they put up on Benny the Butcher, you know, robbed and shot him. And it's really sad because he should be able to floss and show off his Bentley and his Rolls Royce and whatever else. And, you know, be proud of the hard work, be proud of his accomplishments, be proud of where he came from and where he's at. But it's almost like we're not allowed to do that. Without people, without the wolves watching and feeling some type of way. Because, again, it's too much work for people to say, you know what? I want that lifestyle. I want to be able to wear that jewelry and those shoes and, you know. But instead of wanting to go and get their degree or go to dentistry and follow his path, it's easier to just rob him. You know, so that was just really, really sad to see that he was attacked in the manner that he was attacked. And that's why I say at this point, it's not even worth it to floss on social media, especially in 2020. There's too many wolves out here. You got too many people out here struggling, that PPE money, they're, they're, you know, closing down on folks, arresting people. The PPE shit has dried up. So now people are looking for their next bag. And this is why I say you have to really be careful of the image that you put on social media, because even though you might have a segment of the population that's proud of you, their fans, they want to support your work and everything else. You also have the haters. You also have the folks who are watching and feeling some type of way. And I believe that is what happened with this dentist. They saw this brother getting legit money. Flossing on social media, showing his jewelry, his clothing, stuff like that. And they started filling away. And that is just horrible. That is horrible. Um, so he did take the social media. And this is what he posted yesterday. He posted this two days ago. Excuse me. He says, praise God, first and foremost. I'm a dentist by profession, philanthropist by heart and entertainer to my audience. My situation is completely unrelated to the death of Mo3. In fact, I'm a fan of Mo3. It hurts my heart to think that a small portion of my city would think that I would join in on the controversy. I'm a public figure. The worth, ethic, and love that I put into my patients and community speaks volumes. On Thursday, November 12th, I was shot multiple times while leaving my office. I'm very grateful to be able to say that I am recovering well with my family. I will be taking some time to focus on my recovery. During this time, my office staff is working on reaching out to my patients to update them on the next steps. I want to thank everyone who prayed for me and my family and to Dallas for always showing me love no matter what, Dr. Rose. So that is what he wrote on there. Um, and thank goodness he is alive and he's here to, you know what I'm saying, to tell his tale. But I think the fact that this man, who's a dentist first by trade, you know, ended up getting shot is just really sad. You know, and it just goes to show you where a lot of people's mentalities are. And I feel like, you know, at this point, just just be very, very mindful of what you post on social media. You know, the same thing happened here a few months ago with a realtor. Um, the guy she was dating, and he did a lot of flossing on social media. He'd be drying his $100 bills in the dryer and, you know, just showing off all his wealth. And some dudes ended up finding her. They booked um, a realtor appointment. She showed up. They kidnapped her, got her house keys, went back to the house to rob them. And they ended up killing her um, and shooting him. He survived. And like I always say, I feel like social media is the new idle mind. An idle mind is the devil's playground. And I feel like social media gives a lot of people just 
idle time, idle space, you know, to just feel a type of way in that dimension. And all they do is sit and plot, you know. So the whole situation is just very, just very disturbing. I'm glad that he's going to be OK. I'm glad that Boosie's going to be OK. Benny the Butcher, you know, they're going to all be able to live to tell their tale. Mo3 will never come back from this. You know, several other people who died. There was a situation with a father. They were trying to rob him. He got shot. The daughter chased the assailants in her car. They turned around and killed her. You know, so it's gotten really bad out here. So just everyone be careful. Stay prayed up. You know what I'm saying? And and just and be very mindful of what you post. Because right now, times are hard for a lot of people. And you just don't want to sit out here and tempt folks. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. With everything that's going on in the state of Texas, with the crime rising, um, with all of these rappers getting shot, um, you know, Mo3 passing away, the whole situation is insane. How do you guys feel about everything that happened to Dr. Rose, um, who's a dentist and a rapper? And they ended up, you know, robbing him. They ended up trying to rob him in front of his office as he was coming out. Do you feel like people have to be careful with the moves that they make and the things that they post on social media? Because there's a segment of the population that, yes, they may be fans, but you also have people that are not happy. They feel a way. They're going through things and they're looking to come up any way they can. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you thumbs up the video. Don't forget to share as well. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.